Today I want to talk with you about how to tell if your machine uh, should have its virtual machine parameters adjusted in order to do better with the cat vehicle simulation. I want to start by just showing you um, a little bit about the machine that I'm running this on. So if I look about this Mac, uh, this is a pretty old machine. Um, the machine itself you can see here early 2008 Mac Pro. Uh, so it has a lot of processor in it, but this is technology that's about eight or nine years old now. It does have a whole lot of memory, but the default settings for the virtual machine are actually not that generous. And so I want to show you what happens if you try to run um, the cat vehicle simulation on a machine that's really not equipped for it. So source devel setup.bash, and uh, we'll make a few more terminals here. Uh, you can also do that, by the way, by saying terminal, new tab, or sorry, tab, next tab, previous tab, and then file, open tab. So you can do shift control T, which is what I do to open a new tab. Uh, Ross launch, cat vehicle, um, and then we'll run the neighborhood, which is one that has a little bit of stuff inside of it. And you can see now that the neighborhood is going to start up, and I'm going to go ahead and run gazebo here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see a little bit more what's going on and I'm not expecting this to behave very well and the reason for that is that our simulation consumes a lot of cycles and so when we're consuming these cycles uh, I did something wrong here I'll try this one more time here we are things seem to be starting up now which is good um, and so as we're consuming all of these cycles it means that our machine might start uh, having trouble meeting its deadlines and it begins uh, having page faults and having to do various kinds of preemption in order to make sure that uh, that it can solve all the problems that it has and you end up with these various race conditions and generally the simulation doesn't behave very well. So we can fix some of these things by giving more memory or adding more processors. I just want to show you what it might look like if you don't have enough computational capability and how to know that. I think things are possibly still starting up here. Uh, it says you know, various controllers are still being loaded up. Uh, the front right steering controller, I started all these other velocity controllers. So things are popping through here, but it's taking some time. Uh, and now Gazebo seems to be coming up, and we can see that we, we have a real-time factor here of 0.1. That means it's taking 10 seconds in wall clock time, or real life time, to simulate what happens in one second of simulation time. And so we see that we have the car here. We see the big blue laser uh, hemisphere that's sticking out of the front. Let me now go into the cat vehicle source tests open loop. And I'm just going to run the hard left test, which is a common test to run. And we should see the car starting to move here in just a few seconds, maybe. Uh, or it may not because I forgot to, sorry, I forgot to source. Oops. Cat vehicle workspace source devel setup.bash. CD source, cat vehicle source, tests, open loop. Okay, so now hard left. We should see the cat vehicle maybe start to want to drive now. Or it may not even be driving very well. I mean, we can see that we have a, a really terrible real-time factor here. Yeah, so the car is starting to try to move, but you can see it almost looks like it's moving in slow motion. Um, and we can also perhaps uh, see that some of these blue lines here are bleeding through the edge. And so we're not getting good ray tracing because the graphics GPU is having trouble. Generally, the car is trying to move, and it's not doing a very good job. And so we're going to be publishing data here from the, the open loop test, and the car is going to be trying to move, but it's not going to be moving very well. Um, so this generally tells that our simulator is having some trouble, and there's various problems here. So how can we fix this? I'm going to control C this, and control C this. So I killed everything there, and I'm going to show you what the settings are for this virtual machine right now. And I can do that by selecting here. This is on Mac Fusion. It looks like this. I select this little wrench, which gives me the hardware settings. And now let's look at processors and memory. So I'm using one gigabyte of memory from my virtual machine and one processor core. Now these are the recommended values. So these are probably the values that you're seeing. 
What I'm trying to say is that the recommended values may not be best because the recommended values are for running important things on virtual machines like Microsoft Word, which is not that important for what you want to do for this class. Um, and so, thank you. Yep. So coming back now to the things that we can change, I'd like to change the processor, how many processors we can use and how much memory we can use. And I'd also like to change the graphics acceleration because right now the graphics memory is pretty low. But in order to change these, I need to, to shut down the virtual machine. So let's do that first here. Shut down. And you can't just restart it. You have to actually turn it off. Um, and there's good reasons for that. So let's wait for that to happen. Uh, by the way, if you ever find your mouse stuck here, you can say up here at the top, it says to release your mouse, press Apple S. Now I can change these settings. So I'm going to give myself uh, a lot of... 3D graphics because I know the graphics card in this machine is actually not terrible. Um, in processors and memory, there are eight available cores, but I'm going to give myself only four of them. And I'm going to quadruple my memory, so 4096 megabytes. Uh, and then now everything should be fine. Let me bring this back up again, and I'm just going to restart the VM. So now I'm using four times as much memory. Uh, more than three times or about three times as much graphics card and four times as many processors available. So this is now behaving much more like a bare metal machine. If you machine that you have might be a laptop, it might be a, a dual core laptop or it might have, uh, for example, only half the processors available right now. You can really improve your throughput by doing this, but your host machine will suffer a little bit. So you can't just maximize out everything because you're going to see some host performance changes. We're going to now recreate and show whether we get an improvement in uh, the simulation as we saw before. We were getting a real-time factor of about 0.06 between 0.05 and 0.1, uh, which are not great real-time factors. So CD cat vehicle workspace and make a few new tabs with control shift T. Now source devel setup dot bash. Ross launch cat vehicle cat vehicle neighborhood and right away you can see that the the startup is going to be going faster because we have more processors available to us uh, source devel setup bash gz client and in this tab source devel setup bash source control a by the way will take you back to the end of the list. and cat vehicle source tests open loop so we're going to be ready to run the open loop tests just as soon as the rest of the of the system simulation comes up so oh, core dumped excellent every once in a while gazebo crashes on me and by every once in a while i mean really often uh, so now we see a dramatic improvement in the real-time factor. Uh, because I'm running screen recorder here, the real-time factor is actually a lot lower now than it was earlier. Uh, when I ran this example earlier to show how much better it was working, my real-time factor was right around uh, 0.95 to, to, point, um, to 1 point to 1.0. So the real-time factor is dramatically improved. It's about 10 times better than it was. And now if we want to learn, if we want to run uh, dot slash hard left um, by doing this it allows us to see the car should now start driving around maybe maybe not did I run I'll set up that bash CD open loop Ah, now we see the car moving. Yeah, so you can see that our, our performance is dramatically better here. So even though it's not a real-time factor of 1.0, I'm putting some of that on the fact that I'm recording my screen capture here, um, which is taking away a significant amount of my, of my host capabilities. 
but generally you can see that you'll be able to improve your performance by just giving more resources to your virtual machine and that should enable you to have a higher confidence that you'll be able to make your system work better. So I hope this has uh, been a useful tutorial for you and uh, post something in the forums if you'd like to have some feedback. Thank you.